What does Justin Bieber have that you don't? Abs? Top of the chart records? Maybe a celebrity girlfriend? A raving international fan base? This video won't help you get a six pack, score a record deal, or find a hot girlfriend. But after analyzing research from Yale and Harvard professors, I can shed some light on a simple strategy that works to transform an ordinary fan base into an obsessive, screaming, blindly devoted band of followers like Justin Bieber and his believers. I'm a believer! I'll also show you the psychology behind why this works so well. Examples of other people who use this simple strategy knowingly or unknowingly in their marketing, and more important, how you can take advantage of this strategy to turn your fan base into a community of loyal, devoted fans and customers. Keep watching this video. Now I'm sure you know who Justin Bieber is and are familiar with his fan base dubbed Believers. Love him, hate him, it doesn't matter. The kid is omnipresent in today's society. And sure, he's talented and completely deserving of his fame and fortune, but was it really his talent for performing that transformed him from just another kid on YouTube to a megastar with crazed fans? These fans aren't just ordinary fans. They are truly raving believers who will do anything and everything to hear him, see him, breathe him in. So how does he do it? What makes his fans so Fanatic. And more important, how can you leverage the believer strategy to your advantage when it comes to developing a loyal fan base for your business? Well, that's where research from two professors, one from Harvard and one from Yale, comes into play. Here's what happened. They got together 100 people aged 18 and older and invited them to take part in a five minute study on social perception. Each person was given a short description of 11 fictitious people. The volunteers were asked to rate three questions about each character on a scale from one to seven. The questions and the characters remained the same, but the descriptions differed slightly. Here's an example. Jennifer listens to classical music a lot. On a scale from one to seven, with one rated as very weak and seven rated as very strong, how strong is Jennifer's preference for classical music? On a scale from one to seven, with one rated as very likely to change, and seven rated as very likely to stay the same, how likely is it that Jennifer's preference for classical music will remain the same in the next five years? On a scale from one to seven, with one rated as very likely to change, and seven rated as very likely to stay the same, how likely is it that Jennifer's preference for classical music would remain the same if she was surrounded by friends who did not enjoy classical music? Half of the people received that description of Jennifer that Jennifer listens to classical music a lot. The other half of the people received this description. Jennifer is a classical music listener. What's the difference? The first description uses a verb to describe Jennifer as someone who listens to classical music. The second description uses a noun. Jennifer doesn't just listen to classical music. She's a classical music listener. That is her identity. And what did the research show? It showed that participants evaluating the characters described with nouns rated their preferences as stronger, more stable, and more resilient. The research showed how a simple language tweak changed how the participants viewed each character's preferences. Amazing! The researchers went on to replicate this in another way. They found that not only does a simple language tweak impact how you view other people's preferences. It also impacts how you view your own preferences. Meaning, if you say, I am a chocolate lover, versus I eat chocolate a lot, you're more likely to rate your own preference for chocolate higher. Tying this back to Justin Bieber's fans, they're not just people who like to listen to Justin Bieber. They're believers. They identify as believers. But there's also another force at work here that the research did not go into. Through this simple language tweak, using a noun instead of a verb to describe someone's preference for something, you are not only creating an identity that someone can relate to, you're creating an identity that many people who feel that same way can relate to. So Believers doesn't describe just one fan. It describes his legions of fans with an identity that allows them to band together as one crazy, fanatical community blindly devoted to a common idol. This helps to create word of mouth around Bieber and what he does. Now, Justin Bieber isn't the only superstar who, through a simple language tweak, was able to inspire this type of fan base. Lady Gaga calls her fans little monsters. Grateful Dead fans aren't just fans, they're deadheads. And Glee fans, Gleeks. 
This strategy works to inspire their close-knit, rock-solid, loyal, and devoted fan base. Now I'm sure you're wondering, what does this have to do with me and my business? We know from research that giving someone a name to identify with increases their preference for that thing, like chocoholics, believers, gleeks, whatever. We also see that identity inspires these groups of fans to stick together through thick and thin to support the star or food or TV show that they idolize. But you may be wondering how you can make this strategy work for you, even if you're not trying to become an international performing artist. Well, don't worry. This doesn't only work for superstars in the music industry. Let me give you some examples. Wheezy Waiter, who has a comedic web TV show with millions of views and a super active YouTube community, calls his fans beard lovers. Hey, beard lovers. My good friend Marie Forleo calls everyone who goes through her premium training RHHB school, B-school babes. Now, I don't know if this was intentional on Marie's part, but it doesn't really matter because it worked for her. I've had the pleasure of talking to a bunch of B-School babes before, and they wear that badge as an honor. So the key takeaway is this. Start calling your fans and customers something brandable, something they can identify with, want to wear as a badge of honor, and talk about. Now I need to come up with something to call you. How about D-Money Disciples? Uh, no. Social Triggerers. No. Team Trigger. No. Okay, I'll work on it. If you have any ideas, feel free to leave a comment. Here's my challenge to you. How can you leverage this whole don't use verbs, use brandable nouns insight? Leave a comment letting me and the rest of the Social Triggers community know how this might help you. The more ideas we amass together, the better. You never know when creativity will strike. So, did I make you into a Social Trigger? So dumb. Subscribe to my channel by clicking this little subscribe button and you'll get more videos where you can learn about the hidden triggers behind what makes people buy, share, and more. Also, if you're not on the Social Triggers mailing list, type socialtriggers.com into the URL bar, find the email sign up form, and sign up. You'll get premium content that I only share with my email subscribers, like invites to networking meetups and more. Additionally, if you made it this far into the video, do me a solid and press the like button. Those likes let me know I'm doing a good job, and it helps me keep track of who actually watches these things. And finally, make sure you leave a comment below this video to let me know how you plan to use this to your benefit. Now, I can't help you get a six pack, score a record deal, or find a hot girlfriend, but after, you know what, I can help people find a hot girlfriend. We gotta replace that.